Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will be learning about the most common type of ovarian cancer, serous cystadenocarcinoma, on ultrasound. Serous cystadenocarcinoma, a malignant form of ovarian tumor, is the most common type of ovarian cancer. We will study its ultrasound appearances and compare them with normal ovaries for a better understanding. These are transvaginal images. This approach provides much better details and is more accurate than a transabdominal approach. On the left is a normal ovary with anechoic follicles noted. This is the ovarian stroma. On the right is an image showing a complex mass which was later diagnosed as serous cystadenocarcinoma. On ultrasound, ovarian serous cystadenocarcinomas typically appear as predominantly cystic masses. The cystic spaces can be unilocular or multilocular, often containing anechoic or slightly echogenic fluid due to hemorrhage or proteinaceous content. In many cases, you do not find low-level internal echoes in the cystic mass. But in some cases, such as this one, you can see low-level internal echoes in the mass. These internal echoes are usually seen in mucinous tumors. But in malignant serous cystadenocarcinomas, you may find internal echoes. Serous cystadenocarcinomas are much more common than mucinous cystadenocarcinomas. These are the irregular, thick papillary projections. Papillary projection is this ingrowing tissue. Irregular shape is a sign of malignancy. Many cystadenocarcinomas can also have these thick solid components along with cystic components. These tumors tend to be large in size, often measuring between 5 and 10 centimeters or even greater. They are usually bilateral. Color Doppler evaluation of these tumors is very important because it can tell us about the vascularity in the mass, which can determine whether the tumor is benign or malignant. On Color Doppler, malignant tumors show significant vascularity. You can see Color Doppler signals within the mass. These Doppler signals are usually not seen in a benign mass. This vascularity is seen in cystadenocarcinomas. In this image, we see a large anechoic cystic area, which does not have internal echoes. It has a clear black color. Thick, irregular papillary projections are noted as well. This irregularity suggests malignancy. Also, you can see some color Doppler signals in the papillary projections. Here is another case showing a serous cystadenocarcinoma. Multiple, thick, irregular papillary projections are noted inside the cystic mass. The irregular shape and the thickness indicate a malignant lesion. Low-level internal echoes are also noted. Let's look at more cases of serous cystadenocarcinoma. This tumor has a cystic area which is anechoic and without any internal echoes, and a thick papillary projection with increased vascularity on Doppler. Doppler signals are noted within the papillary projection. Even though its shape is somewhat smooth, the vascularity is an alarming feature and warrants further investigation. This mass has very thick papillary projections with irregular contours, with mixed solid and cystic components, as well as thick septations. The rest of the mass is anechoic, with no low-level internal echoes. This irregular shape and thickness are alarming features. Here is another case. The tumor has anechoic cystic areas with no low-level internal echoes. It contains a thin septation, but has thick, irregularly shaped papillary projections, 
which show vascularity on color Doppler. A papillary projection is surrounded on its three sides by cystic fluid. One, two, and three. It is a solid tissue growth arising from the cyst wall or septum and projecting into the cyst lumen surrounded by cystic fluid on at least three sides, whereas a solid component has one side surrounded by fluid. It may form part of the wall, fill the cyst, or extend outside the cyst. Now we will discuss the findings related to ascites and peritoneal disease, which are common in ovarian serous cystadenocarcinoma, especially in advanced stages. The ascites is not shown in the images. Ascites is a very common finding and is often one of the earliest indirect clues to malignancy. On ultrasound, free fluid is typically seen in the pouch of Douglas, and as the disease progresses, it extends into the paracolic gutters and the upper abdomen. The amount of ascites is usually moderate to massive rather than minimal. Unlike simple benign ascites, malignant ascites may show internal echoes representing cellular debris, protein, or tumor cells. This helps differentiate it from transudative fluid. Peritoneal metastases can occur due to transcelomic spread of tumor cells. Ultrasound may show peritoneal thickening, which appears as an irregular, echogenic lining of the peritoneal surfaces. There may also be nodular peritoneal implants, seen as small hypoechoic or echogenic nodules along the peritoneum. A classic advanced finding is omental caking, which appears as a solid, echogenic mass in the anterior abdomen, replacing the normal omental fat. Lymph node involvement is an important feature suggesting malignant ovarian disease, including serous cystadenocarcinoma. Lymph node involvement is not shown here. We will discuss that in another video. On ultrasound, we look carefully at the pelvic and paraaortic lymph nodes. In malignancy, these lymph nodes are often enlarged due to metastatic infiltration. The involved lymph nodes typically appear rounded rather than oval. This change in shape reflects loss of normal nodal architecture. They are usually hypoechoic on ultrasound, meaning they appear darker compared to surrounding tissues due to replacement of normal fatty tissue by tumor cells. Another key feature is loss of the fatty hilum. A normal lymph node has an echogenic fatty hilum, but in malignant involvement, this hilum becomes obliterated or is no longer visible. The combination of lymph node enlargement, rounded shape, hypoechoic texture, and loss of fatty hilum strongly raises suspicion for metastatic spread in ovarian serous carcinoma. Now we will look at specific lab tests which can help in the diagnosis of ovarian serous cystadenocarcinoma. The first one is CA125. It is the most commonly elevated marker. It is elevated in 80 to 90% of advanced high-grade serous carcinomas, although it is less sensitive in early-stage disease. The human epididymis protein 4 test is more specific and helpful than CA125 in diagnosing ovarian serous cystadenocarcinomas. It is often elevated in serous and endometrioid carcinomas and is less affected by benign gynecologic conditions. HE4 is used with CA125 in Roma score. Roma score stands for Risk of Ovarian Malignancy Algorithm. It's a medical tool which uses blood tests like CA125 and HE4 and menopausal status to assess ovarian cancer risk. Ultimately, serous ovarian cystadenocarcinoma is confirmed by biopsy of the tissue samples. There are no specific signs and symptoms of ovarian cancers. It is often asymptomatic in early stages. 
These signs and symptoms usually occur in advanced stages of the disease. The symptoms of ovarian serous cystadenocarcinoma can be divided into local, pelvic symptoms and systemic symptoms. Most of these occur due to the mass effect of the tumor and peritoneal spread. Local symptoms arise because the tumor grows within the pelvis and abdomen, compressing surrounding organs. Abdominal or pelvic pain is common. It is usually dull, persistent, or crampy rather than sharp, and results from stretching of the ovarian capsule or peritoneal irritation. Abdominal distension occurs due to progressive enlargement of the ovarian mass and accumulation of malignant ascites. On examination, a palpable pelvic or abdominal mass may be felt. This mass is often firm, irregular, and fixed, suggesting malignancy. As the tumor presses on adjacent organs, pressure symptoms develop. Bladder compression causes urinary frequency or urgency. Bowel compression leads to constipation, a feeling of incomplete evacuation, or early satiety. Patients may also complain of bloating or indigestion, which are often vague and easily overlooked. Systemic symptoms reflect advanced disease and malignancy-related metabolic effects. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.